Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Batra and this is the earnings special. Our focus on this edition is ICICI Securities. Joining in to discuss the quarterly numbers with me is the top management now. Mr. Vijay Chandok joins in. He's the MD and CEO at ICICI Securities. Welcome to the show, sir. And thank you so much for taking the time out. Well, uh, uh, to first uh, talk about the earnings fine print, we do know that the total income has risen to 865 crore rupees. Uh, the PAT or the profit after tax is down about 14% at about 300 crore rupees but there's a interim dividend of about 9.75 rupees per equity share that has been also announced by the board as well could you take us through all the fine print of the earnings this quarter well thank you very much uh, let me also wish you a happy diwali let me wish all the viewers a very happy diwali and uh, indeed you sort of captured the, the essence of uh, the numbers uh, very well uh, I would say that uh, when you look at the fine print, I think what is really stand out for me is the fact that this was a period when there was a fair amount of muted, um, uh, I would say, cash volumes in an equities business, which uh, uh, while it is an, uh, an important part of the business, it's, it's, it's something that which is reducing in proportion. But nonetheless, uh, that came, came in at about 21% lower. Uh, in for the industry I'm talking about in this quarter compared to the previous, uh, you know, YOY basis. And um, in such a context, uh, we actually uh, uh, were able to increase our overall revenue. Uh, and uh, that is a testimony of our strategy to texturize and diversify our uh, uh, business model and, you know, revenue line items. Um, okay. And uh, that to me is a standout uh, a sort of a, a fine print. Uh, the other uh, areas of, uh, I would say, importance and uh, what is below the numbers is the fact that it is all happening with gains in market share. Uh, if you look at uh, our equity uh, ADTO market shares, it has gone up by about 90 basis points sequentially, YY as well. If mm. you look at our uh, derivative market share, that has also gone up. The newcomers that are coming, the new demand accounts that are opening, that share has also gone up. Uh, commodities market share has gone up, uh, the mutual fund AUM market share has gone up. So a lot of emphasis in difficult market conditions to focus on market share. Right. Also, sir, there's been slight concern on the brokerage income, which is down on a year on year basis. Could you help us with, you know, what could be the reasons behind it? Is this a one off that we are seeing right here and the outlook going forward from here? So let me place this big broking in, uh, income in context. Uh, uh, you know, when we pivoted uh, our strategy about three years back. We had articulated that uh, broking as a line item singularly is not going to be um, the way in which we are going to charge our customers because we pivoted from the manner in which we charge the customers as a single broking line item to a number of charges by reducing broking actually and introducing certain other charges the way the uh, entire industry was uh, morphing. Uh, right. Keeping that in view, you would notice that below broking, there is a line item called allied equity. Uh, so the right way to think about our uh, equities uh, you know, revenue is broking, mm. which is one part of the business and then allied equity. So when you add the two and you look at what uh, you know the team delivered or the company delivered in quarter two and compare it on a sequential or by uh, basis, you will find in both these numbers, it's actually grown. Uh, okay. So that's the right way and that's, a, uh, you know, because that's been part of our uh, articulated approach and strategy that we will reduce broking uh, mm -hmm. and we will introduce other line items. So it is in that context that broking revenue you would see declining. When you actually okay. look at broking revenue singularly as a line item, there are broadly two components, cash equity and FNO. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, cash equity uh, is, is something that, uh, you know, whatever revenue comes out is a function of two things. One is the mix between intraday and uh, delivery. And the second is, I would say, the um, uh, the volumes in the market, all right? Uh, FNO on the other side tends to be a little more secular because mm -hmm. volumes tend to keep increasing over time. And we've seen right from 9, 2015 onwards, a secular trend of derivative volumes going up. Uh, and uh, uh, that proportion is also increasing. So as we morph this business line uh, within a very, uh, uh, I would say, specific line item of brokerage as this morphing is going to happen i think over a period of time we'll start seeing uh, that uh, also uh, moving up but okay. as an overall equity pack uh, i think that's the right way to see it because that's a complete picture it's a sequential as well as a yy increase 
Okay. Could you also shed some more light on how do we see the uh, you know performance of the retail business versus the other segments this quarter and going forward from here, which is the segment that's going to be the key growth driver for you? So uh, when you look at dissect the component of uh, ICICI Securities overall revenue, uh, you will find that close to eighty to eighty five percent, depending on the year, is comprising what one would call retail, and the balance fifteen percent would be institutional business. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, broad proportion and the intent is that retail is going to be the driver of growth. Um, uh, the uh, entire focus within retail is uh, pivoting uh, to diversification and pivoting to wealth. Uh, so we have uh, uh, very consciously built a franchise of uh, customers having at least a crore of rupees whom we call wealth uh, mm -hmm. customers which uh, customers we service through a 360 degree approach uh, through a, a relationship manager right and now uh, this has become a fairly sizable part of our business because the aggregate value of aum of these wealth customers each one minimum 1 crore with us has uh, now crossed 3 lakh crores oh okay. uh, so it's a fairly sizable uh, business and that in a way positions us as one of the largest i would say wealth tech player uh, in the country uh, and uh, therefore, what is going to be the driver going forward? It's going to be retail mm -hmm. and within retail diversification away from equities into more uh, distribution of financial products, which is insurance related, loan related, and mm -hmm. I would say uh, mutual fund and other uh, financial products related. Mm -hmm. And within um, retail, wealth uh, as a component is going to be uh, an area of focus. And the reason why we are doing this is because wealth tends to be sticky. Wealth revenue seems to be less cyclical and diversification away from equities into some of the other areas also, in a way, decyclicalizes the business. So predictability of overall company revenue improves. And, and that's the approach that's the strategy. Okay. So for the rest of the financial year, for the second half, if you could give us an outlook on uh, both the top line and profitability, what can we expect going forward, especially with uh, the new Sambath now starting? So uh, I think... Uh, uh, when I uh, look at uh, the outlook going forward, uh, it becomes extremely difficult to predict, you know, the absolute near-term outlook. Uh, currently, the near-term outlook has been facing headwinds in form of uh, you know, largely driven by, I would say, capped upsides on equities. You know, even if you see for the last six to nine months, the equities have been kind of range-bound. Uh, mm. I think India is in a very good spot, good position, but globally, Things are not so conducive. You're seeing sticky inflation globally. You're seeing quantitative tightening. You're seeing, uh, uh, you know, interest rates going up. Yeah. Uh, all these uncertain factors, geopolitics keeps popping its uh, head again and again. So all these factors are not really helping the global cause. And to some extent, that is capping the, you know, uh, muted, uh, muting the, you know, upsides on equities even in, in the country. Uh, and whenever you have a scenario of this nature and when where at least the near term outlook looks a little uncertain, retail participation tends to sort of uh, lose some, you know, sort of uh, there's some element of indifference coming in from sure. retail investors because they love to see excitement here and now. Sure. Uh, uh, given that, I would say tough to predict the near term outlook, but I'm extremely positive on the uh, medium term uh, outlook. And the reason is that um, we are digitizing. Uh, and uh, we find that a lot of uh, younger Indians have got a greater aff affinity to financial assets uh, and to digital methods of uh, uh, participating in the markets. So that numbers are actually staggering if you look at what's likely to happen, what's happening and what's likely to happen on a continuing basis going forward. Hmm. We see this as a particular trend. So from a medium term perspective, extremely positive. And, okay. and that's exactly what has happened within the company. Because if you see three years, the last three years, we've seen that profits have nearly tripled and mm. revenue has actually doubled. So mm. our profit actually increased from roughly about 500 crores three years back to about 400, uh, 14, almost 1400 crores uh, mm. last year. And um, similarly, revenue doubled. So that's the kind of So trend. would it be fair to say we will be able to see over the next three to five years similar pattern of growth or even bigger, uh, you know, spike right there when we talk on a, uh, you know, three years uh, time frame or a five year time frame on so both top line and profitability? We haven't given out any specific guidelines on numbers, but I think uh, input parameters to get an amplification, I think is a commitment and focus. 
and i would request all the investors to measure out us on the input parameters which is you know how robust we are making the company how we are improving net promoter score how we are able to retain customers how we are able to increase market share mm. i believe that financial outcomes is going to be a consequence of doing the input parameters very well so our focus mm-hmm. for the next few years will be focus on input parameters put your head down and do what the customer wants financial right. outcomes okay. Absolutely. Just last question to you, since we are sitting at this beginning of the new summer year. You know, the last summer has been largely fa- flat. You know, and uh, not many investors have made much money, especially on the index level. If we talk about, there have been definitely stocks from the five uh, hundred basket, uh, the Nifty and the Sensex basket, where we have seen a uh, sharp jump. But it has been very far and few between stocks that have actually made a lot of money. But uh, you know, keeping in mind all those concerns that you also pointed out in your answers, there is inflation. there is the rising interest rate scenario the war still persists now there are the rising fears of uh, recession across the globe as well do you believe the markets will be able to weather these storms especially in india and how should investors be prepared for the next year what can we expect so uh, i would say that uh, you very nicely captured uh, some of the factors that will impact markets uh, I, i in such a context uh, uh, if i were to sum it up in uh, one word uh, markets uh, are fraught with uncertainty uh, uh, captured through all these points that you mentioned and when there is that uncertainty there is capping of upside uh, i may not sound very popular saying this but i do believe that uh, on the one side you have these uncertainties but on the other side i think i uh, i must emphasize that india is doing extremely well i think some of the structural growth drivers are there to uh, really propel growth Mm-hmm. and i also see that the framework of government the policy uh, you know making is very conducive to support this kind of development and growth so there are those india specific uh, i would say tailwinds towards pushing growth and these global factors which are enveloping with uncertainty um, in case there is some fading of global factors in in let's say in the near term for example i think inflation is one area that everyone should watch if uh, the narrative on inflation turns that okay we are done with it now it's on the path down i think markets will sort of show a very very positive return but if there is a tendency of inflation to be sticky and you know there is a persistency of quantitative tightening in global markets there's persistency of interest rates uh, then probably the, the the revival will be a little more uh, sort of prolonged i'm talking about returns on markets uh, but i would uh, you know if i have to just take a call i would uh, i would rather uh, go on the side that there's a reasonable chance that you know things will start getting better in the next few months and then uh, the underlying india factors will take over so uh, brace for some indian markets up. continue to outperform the world over the next some worth and will it continue to shine um, you know vis a vis the other asset classes is that something that all the viewers would want to know from you i would i would i would appear <laughs> towards that direction that yeah once uh, uh, you know if i have to really take a call i'm 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 a little more on the optimistic side that there's a reasonable chance that we will continue this out performance after a little bit of you know range bound uh, phase in between now okay well on that note thank you so much mr chandok for being with us sharing your time with us and uh, speaking to us about the fine print of the earnings he is wishing you all the very best for the future quarters we will catch up very very soon with you and uh, he is also wishing you once again a very very happy and a prosperous diwali and new year to your entire team to your family from the team of business today television thank you very much and wish all the viewers and the entire team a very happy diwali once again